My sons and I have found a new liking for anime. Anime is short for Japanese animation. One of my son's favorite anime is Naruto. Every year, an anime convention is held in Detroit called the Yumicon. Last year, my son Kaden chose to dress up as Gara, one of his favorite characters from the show. Gara carries a gourd on his back that he uses for battles. A gourd was needed to complete Gara's look. In searching the internet, nothing was found that closely resembles Gara's gourd. My son and I decided to make our own gourd because we didn't like anything that we found on the internet. This here is a replica of Gara's gourd that I made for my son for the Yumicon show. In a little bit, I will show you everything we need to complete this look. These are all the supplies you need to complete Gara's gourd. Two giant size punching balloons, newspaper, 12 four ounce bottles of Elmer's glue, scissors, pencil, metal grommets, baker's twine, sponge, one push-up container, paint and paint brushes, press and seal, three large bowls. On the right is a regular size marshmallow. On the left is a jumbo size marshmallow. You will need to use the jumbo size marshmallow on the left. Red ribbon, glue gun and glue sticks, the first step in the process is blowing up the balloons. One balloon should be slightly smaller than the other, and when stacked on top of each other, should sort of resemble a peanut shape. The bowls we have here are going to be used for drying purposes. So once you are done applying the paper mache, they can set inside these for drying. Next, you'll prepare the glue mixture by pouring the whole container of Elmer's glue into your bowl. Fill your bottle up with half water and pour. Now stir both mixtures together. If it's too runny, you can always add a little more glue. After the glue mixture is prepared, next you'll want to rip your newspaper into one inch strips. Once the strips have been torn, you'll want to tear them in half again to make them about this size. Take your newspaper strips and dip it in the bowl. You want to cover it pretty well. Once you've got it covered on both sides, take your two fingers and just slowly bring it down like this and remove any excess uh, glue mixture. And you'll just repeat this process. You want to overlap it just a little bit when you put it on and just smooth it out. So keep applying your strips all the way down to here and then the next step will be applying them the opposite direction. Once all the strips have been applied in the one direction all the way around the balloon, you'll want to put it back in your uh, bowl and let it dry completely. Do not use a blow dryer to speed up the drying process. I tried this once and it caused the balloon to kind of shrink a little and it gave me um, an imperfect balloon. So don't try to speed up the process by using a blow dryer. Have patience and let it dry completely by air. Sometimes it may take overnight. While the first one's drying, you'll want to start on your second balloon. Same procedure. In between applying layers of the paper mache to keep your glue mixture from drying up, I find the best way is uh, press and seal. So just apply some press and seal to the top and seal it off pretty good. 
no air will get in and it won't dry out. And then when you're ready to apply another layer of the paper mache, pull it off and get going. Once your balloon is dry, you'll want to put another coat on opposite direction. You can also use the rubber band from the punchy balloon to hang it to dry. The next step in the process is to cut a hole in the bottom of both balls. You want to be very gentle when you're doing this not to dent the balloon at all. Now that you've cut your circle and made it as round as possible, you're going to want to reach in here and pull out the balloon carefully so you don't dent the sides. That's it. You're going to want to do the same thing to both. Make sure that the balloon's pulled out of both of them. The next step is to make the holes for the grommets. There's one up here near the top of the smaller ball and two on the bottom. So you're gonna to wanna to take your smaller one, measure about six, seven inches down, marker a little circle where your grommet is gonna go. That's your smaller one. Take your bottom one and do the same thing. I already did it for you here. Spot here, spot here, near the bottom. So what you're gonna take next is you're gonna take your scissors. Carefully puncture a hole, putting your hand through the, through the middle and holding, bracing it on the inside so you don't dent the ball. So you puncture it and just move it around until you get a big enough, as big as that, mat, that marker mark, as long as the grommet can fit in the hole. Now take your glue and put a little around there and insert your grommet. Again, bracing it from the inside or you will dent the ball. There you go. Now do the same with all three holes and let it dry. After your grommets are dry, take your smaller half and your baker's twine. Measure out about arm's width length. You're going to want to insert it. Again, this is the smaller, the top half. Insert it into the grommet. Bring it through. Tie it around a pencil. Now once your pencil is tied, you can drop it inside. Now it will pull out. Now you want to take your other end, put it through the hole, the top one. And this is the tricky part. You have to try to feed it back through the bottom one. There you go. So once you tighten it up a little bit, once these two are together like this, you can see how that is resembling that one. Next, you'll want to puncture some holes all the way around on both sides, about three inches, space them about three inches, and again, just put, put be careful not to dent the ball. I can't stress that enough. Apply light pressure and then do a little spin here with the scissors. That should give it enough space for the string to go in and out. Take your baker's twine. Do the same thing, measure it out. 
part. Now you're going to weave, you're basically going to sew the top to the bottom using the holes that you just made. Starting with your smaller half, once you put it through the first hole, do the same thing as you did earlier, tying the pencil to the string. Once you have that secured, the fun part, sewing these two together. Remember that these grommets need to stay in line with each other. So your first priority would be to make sure that these two are lined up when you start sewing the when you start sewing the weaving the two together. To make it easier for you to weave the string into these holes, take your sharpened pencil, put it through your hole here, give it a nice little push and twist and it makes a perfect little round circle that you can weave your baker's twine through. Next you'll want to go to your freezer and grab a push-up and eat it. Once you've eaten your push-up, you'll have a nice push-up container. What you need to do is take your container, you want to cut it about an inch from the, cent from the bottom. Just like that. This is going to be your plug for your cork. What you're going to want to do next is you're going to want to open up this hole a little more, almost to the same as this. So your hole should look like this. Once you've cut this out and made your hole the right size, set it aside, take your sponge and cut it into strips. These later will be used to push into here and to close up this gap. So continue cutting your strips. When you're done cutting your strips, you're going to want to prepare your um, paper mache glue mixture again. Rip your strip in half. Put it down inside here. Bring it around to the side and apply it to the top like that. And you're going to want to do that all the way around several layers until you get a nice hard solid surface. Once you get one good layer on here, take some and just wrap them around over and over and over until you get a good coat. The top will resemble this thickness when we're all done. Take the pieces that you cut earlier Soak them in your glue mixture. Squeeze a little of the uh, excess off. Now you're going to wedge these in here. Okay? This is not fun. But wedge them in here. What you're going to do is you're going to wedge it in here all the way around. Okay? Once you have them wedged in here all the way around, you're going to take your paper mache strips and you're going to cover your sponge with the paper mache so you won't see your sponge. And that'll give it a nice closure in between the two balls. This is what it will look like after you apply the sponges and a, a few layers of paper mache around the sponges. I did the uh, paper mache going up like this. And the top part, many, many layers of paper mache. I wrapped them around and then stripped them back this way and wrapped them around and back this way a few times to get it nice and thick. After these are done, your next step is to plug up this hole on the bottom. So don't forget about the hole you left there. So just apply a couple paper mache strips, rip them in half, and cover up the hole. When your gourd's completely dry, grab your lighter shade of paint and put on one coat and let dry. Once your first coat is dry, Go ahead and apply a second coat, making sure to get into every little crack and cover every little spot. Two coats 
had been applied to the gourd and is now dry, you want to get out your darker color paint and slightly dab. Don't put too much on your um, paintbrush because you can always add more. You can't take away. You slightly dab. You're going to want it to look like this right here. So just slightly dab. You're going to want to continue doing this type of motion all over the whole, whole gourd. Bring out your smaller brush and dip it in the dark brown that you just applied and paint the marshmallow brown, the whole thing brown. Now over time this marshmallow will harden. Now it's time to paint on your lines that look like cracks and that are black, that look like this. And they can be any shape at all, so just use your imagination and make it look like, like it's a glass cracking. Next we want to create the, the E pattern on the gourd. Make sure when you're measuring out the pattern for your E's that you place them strategically because this is going to be on your back. So this is the part that you're not going to see because it's going to be up against your back. So if it was laying up against your back like this, you want people to see the E's. You don't want them back here where you're never going to see them. So, and keep that in mind, you're going to have two for the bottom, two for the bottom, two for the top. And um, you have one E going backwards, forward, backwards. Okay. Grab something with a smooth edge that's flexible so we can trace on the lines. Now that you have your E's painted on, your last and final step is attaching your ribbon. Make sure when you attach your ribbon that your seams are in the back of your gourd. Where your grommets are is the back of your gourd. That way you can't see it later on. Grab your glue gun. There you go. Da 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 da! Finished product. Garth Gore.